what I've noticed from doing research for on you is just like you have you had so many different ideas in so many different places and then you kind of just made your whole thing with monkey inferno being about ideas and creating ideas is that correct from an outside perspective uh yeah it sounds like it when you look at it that way at the time that's not how it felt um you know i was just kind of like stumbling from one thing to the next i did did the sushi concept okay cool then did this biotech thing in australia then I wanted to move to Silicon Valley because I was like, well, I like startups. So let me go where all the startups are. What I did do was I came up with a very specific vision for what I wanted next. That's probably the most valuable thing I did um, because I, I was in Australia and I thought, okay, I'm now pretty confident in myself. Like I didn't know shit about sushi and we were able to like pull off a sushi restaurant that was getting a bunch of like kind of accolades and was profitable for, you know, for, for a while. We just didn't want to continue the business. I didn't know anything about biotech and I didn't know anything about Australia, but I moved here, figured it out. And that thing's you know going well. So I thought, well, pretty confident in myself, but, uh, but I, I, you know, what is this next chapter about? I'm only 23 years old. I still got plenty of time. So let me, let me do two things. So I said, first, I don't like when I'm, I don't like that. I'm right now. I feel like in the room, I'm the smartest guy in the room. Meaning if I'm the CEO, people are looking for me to the, for the answers. And that's good because that forces you to get smart because you got to come up with answers. But I thought, what if I'm like just a white belt who doesn't realize it? What, is it? what does a black belt know that I don't know? And I thought, well, if I move to Silicon Valley, there's a bunch of way smarter, more successful people than me there. Why don't I team up with one of them first and learn from them uh, just for a bit? Let me shadow them and I will kick ass for them. Here's the trade. I'll kick ass for you. And you expose me to your way of thinking and doing things. And I want to see what's the difference between my way of thinking and doing things and yours. And so that was my first thing was I'm going to work with somebody who's done it before. I'm going to be the right-hand man for somebody who's done it before. The second thing was I said, I'd like to, I don't know what I like. I don't know what topic I like. I don't know what industry I like, but I know I like startups. And I, um, I know that. I want to somehow cram 20 years of experience into four years of my life. Like I'm down for something intense. I'm down to like really bust my ass. Uh, But what I want is like, I want to come out of this a black belt. And if that normally takes 20 years, how do I do it in four? And, um, and so I thought, well, the way to do, I think the way you get good at anything is by getting a lot of reps, being very hands-on, being immersed and um, having, you know, a variety of different challenges, not just like the same challenge that you specialize in. So I thought to myself, it'd be great if somehow I could be like involved in multiple startups at once. And I didn't know how that would work or what that would mean, but that's, that was my mindset. And so the very first night I had that clarity, I wrote that down. I said, I want to work with somebody who's kicked ass before. I'm going to be the right-hand man. Secondly, I'm going to somehow have a portfolio of bets that I'm getting reps with, not just one. And I went on AngelList, which is a website for like finding jobs in the tech industry. And I, um, the very like kind of the third or fourth listing was this thing called monkey inferno. And basically it was a guy who kicked ass in the internet world and sold his last company for $850 million. And he ran an idea lab, which was working on three or four ideas at once. And um, they, they owned them, they built them themselves and they were executing them. I thought, Whoa, shit, this is like exactly what I wanted. So I went all in and I was like, basically wrote the guy a long letter, an email, but it felt more like a letter. And I made a website, that was like my, me, why I'm perfect for Monkey Inferno. And I just went all in instead of like, just like kind of submitting a resume and hoping for the best. And that's how I ended up getting a job there. And Monkey Inferno, like you mentioned, is an idea lab. So it's a place to have a bunch of ideas starting from zero and building them and seeing it's experimentation. Do quick, rapid experimentation to see, is this idea going to work? Oh, okay, no, kill it. Move on to the next one. Is this idea going to work? Yes. Okay, double down, do more. And so that's what that, that business was. What do you say in that letter? You know, I said, uh, you know, dear Mr. Birch, this guy's guy's name is Michael Birch. I said, um, you know, I saw the job posting that you have for product manager. Um, I'm totally unqualified for it because it said like, you know, you need to have worked at a big tech, uh, tech company like a Facebook or whatever, you know, seven years of product management experience. I didn't know what product management meant. So definitely didn't have seven years of experience, but I told him, I said, I'm not qualified for the job you have, but allow me to convince you that I'm still the man for the job. That was like kind of my opening line. And I said, um, you know, I, what I bring to the table is a lot of raw hustle. And, you know, I'm just the type of guy, you, you, you give me an idea and I make it happen one way or another. I find a way. 
Um, you know, some of the things I believe is I believe in like kind of rapidly testing ideas using the lean startup philosophy. Um, I believe in um, blah, 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 blah. I'm kind of like these, you know, these kind of like schools of thought. I'm, I'm a subscriber to those schools of thought. And here's some stuff I've done. You know, the last thing I did was this. The, the thing before that was this. Uh, frankly, like what I'm looking for next is this. And, I, and, you know, your listing seems like honestly the perfect listing. That's why I'm reaching out this way. Um, you know, would love to have a, would love to have a chat if you're looking for somebody like this, something like uh, something like that and, uh, sent them an email. So then you actually end up getting the job and what happens? What do you learn from the black belt? By the way, I should say there's actually a step in between where that got me the interview and that got me the second interview and then things are going well, but I think all, all the time, they basically were like, we really like this guy. Everybody talks to him, really likes him, but he has no, none of the on paper experience that we're hiring for. So are we going to hire this guy? And then he's not, you know, he's 24 years old. He's not like, there's none, no experience. And this was a team of like much more seasoned people. Like I don't know, average age might've been like 35 or something. And so they, and they'd all worked in tech. They were all like, you know, really good engineers or designers and whatnot. So in between, they kind of ghosted me uh, after the second interview. And I, I said, okay, no, no problem. Um, I really want this job though. I really like this. So how do I get this job? So I thought, well, the best way to convince them that I can do this job is just to do the job for them. And so I started, what I did was I thought, okay, well, what would I do if I was already there? If I was already there, I would be taking their products. I would be looking at them and saying, great, here's what's really great about this product. Here's where, here's like two or three things that we could do to improve it. Here's what that, if we make those changes, you know, here's what they might look like. And here's what might happen if we make those changes. Um, and then, you know, in theory, I would hand that to, I would present that to kind of the team and say, great, are we all bought into this? And let's go make those changes and see what happens. Uh, the other thing was, I was like, I would be talking to customers and getting feedback and um, using that feedback, relaying that feedback and using that feedback to guide the direction to come, of the products. So I just took two of their products I saw on their portfolio and I just did that. I started calling up some of their customers as if I worked at the company and was getting feedback and I documented it all. And then I made a slide deck that was like, hey, based on my, my opinion and like some customer feedback, here's two or three things that I would improve at this thing that you, that you have built. And I basically told them like, guys, I do this stuff for fun anyways. I'm just a nerd about products. So, you know, if you don't, you know, hope this doesn't come across as me, you know, criticizing from the outside, trying to be you know, helpful in some way. Here's some, some, some food for thought. And um, this is the type of thing I'm into. And hopefully this gives you an idea of how my brain works. And so that got them hooked back in of like, then I started getting more, you know, then I got like to the finish line basically uh, through that. So I think that was a, a very useful tactic that uh, I'm surprised more people don't do.